Hello, and thank you all for joining us for this short presentation on some of the endpoint adjudication utilities that we have provided to our users within Datatrack's EDC. What we have prepared for you today is a short walkthrough of a demo study in which we have built an endpoint adjudication workflow that wraps around uh, the results coming out of Core Labs in the course of a trial. Within Datatrack's EDC, at the point of trial design, we provide a variety of general purpose tools that allow for you to design highly configurable workflows that can be wrapped around essentially any endpoint that is found within a patient casebook. So let's take a look at an, at an example of this process. I'm in my patient's manager, and I'm going to begin by opening up a patient casebook. So like I mentioned earlier, in this casebook, we are collecting a variety of core lab assessments that you can see listed here. Beneath this, under the DUS core lab form, there's some additional data that's collected here, and ultimately, endpoint assignments are produced from these lab results. So let's go ahead and access, access this form. Now currently, I am in my facilitator role because this is the user role we have designated as responsible for essentially defining the context of the adjudication task. You can see here in these questions, the user is able to select which of those core lab forms are pertinent to this particular adjudication assignment. I'd also like to call out that the answer options provided here are actually being drawn from the list of forms that have already been added to this particular patient's casebook just to really illustrate that the answer options you provide to your users can be drawn from other parts of the patient casebook itself. Now, once this context is defined, the facilitator is then responsible for assigning the individual users who will be assigned as adjudicators or readers in this case. They can choose from a list of available users possessing the appropriate roles and in this particular configuration, we have two core readers who ass whose assessments are required, and we have a third adjudicator that is pulled in only if needed in the event that, that reader one and reader two have disagreement in their results and a tiebreaker is needed. Bear in mind, again, this is just one example of how this workflow could be configured. Um, if this needs to be scaled up to accommodate a larger number of readers, you could, for example, design this process to use five core readers along with two tiebreakers when needed. Regarding this tiebreaker here, I could, of course, wait to assign this reader until the point where this adjudication workflow requires that third reader, but I can also do so in advance, which I'm going to show you now. Go ahead and enter a reason for change and save the form. Now, looking over here at the form navigation, beneath the endpoint assignment as a facilitator, I have visibility of two endpoint adjudication forms. These are those forms assigned to those first two readers because the third reader's task and corresponding form are not produced until the point where they are needed. So in addition to having visibility of these uh, adjudication assessments as a facilitator, I can also see the endpoint adjudication outcome form. So this form is responsible for displaying the current state of the overall workflow process. We can see at the top, we have this status field. And the status field is responsible for showing us the current workflow status for this adjudication task. Beneath this, we can see the status of each reviewer's uh, assessment. We're currently waiting for first level assessments to be completed because as we can see, the second reader has completed their assessment, whereas the first reader has not. The rest of this comes into play once the core assessments are in initially. So let's go ahead and pop out of the patient casebook and we'll now take a look at this process from the perspective of a reader. So as I mentioned, at the point where these readers are assigned, the core readers anyhow, 
that is when they are they are issued a user task. They are issued a, an adjudication task in our user tasks manager. But we're going to begin from the dashboard. So opening up my actions menu, I'm going to switch my role to adjudicator. And then I'm going to navigate to the user tasks manager. As you can see, I only have my one adjudication task here. It is open and I can access both patient casebook using the link here or this go to EDC link will take me directly to the task itself. Now, particularly in the case of readers and adjudicators, there's often a high degree of interest in keeping their specific workflows within the EDC as simple as possible. They're very commonly less familiar with EDC systems. Uh, they may not have been trained as thoroughly as some of the other users that are more commonly working within these platforms. So in the interest of simplicity, we've also added a variety of tools that can be added directly to your dashboard. Tools like recent user tasks. If I pull this over here into my dashboard, as a reader, I can see those open tasks assigned to me displayed directly on my dashboard with no need to navigate anywhere in the system. And they are paired, again, with that link that will take me directly to the corresponding task. Now, as you can see, the casebook looks a little differently this time, because as I am now in my adjudicator role, I am blinded from most of the patient casebook. I'm able to access those core lab forms that are related to my adjudication assignment. I cannot see who the other reader that has been assigned is. I can see that the third adjudicator is myself, but that's because in this particular case, I have assigned myself to both of these tasks. But if I navigate to this adjudication uh, assessment here and complete it, we can move forward with the demonstration. So I'm going to begin by marking this as yes, and we'll check off this first box here, and then mark my assessment as complete. Now, once I navigate to my facilitator role, we can see that the current state of this particular outcome form is completed with two assessments. So both of the first readers are done, and the assessment of the system is that their assessments are in consensus. So there is agreement between all reviewed questions between the first two readers. So this particular task is now complete. However, if I navigate back to this endpoint adjudication form and switch back to my adjudicator role and change one of these values, provide the system with a reason for change, and save the form, then switch back to my facilitator role. We can see in this adjudication outcome form, we're now waiting on an additional assessment because there was no agreement between the first two readers. So it's at this point that the third endpoint adjudication task is created. In fact, if I navigate to my user tasks manager, we can now see that second user task assigned to my user account listed here. This is the third assessment. So once this is completed, let me mark this off as yes, check the first box, and mark this as complete. Return to my facilitator role. We can now see that the workflow status has been updated to completed with three assessments. And the system is determining that the majority assessment was this first item here, major amputation of a target limb. So again, this is just one example of how the general purpose tools that we provide our users for form design and for the design of workflows can be used to adjudicate any endpoint. When this is paired with tools like image data capture, allowing the, the system to ingest data from any image file, 
This really opens up your entire casebook to being wrapped in workflow mediated uh, task assignment protocols. Thank you for attending this short presentation. And if you have any questions or would like to see a demo in more detail, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.